So in this video, we're going to show you how to simulate a die roll experiment in Excel. And the function that we're going to use is another random number generator in Excel, which is called rand between. Now, we could do this um, simulation with the rand function that we used in the coin toss experiment. But um, as when you have multiple outcomes, uh, the if statements can be quite complicated. And so the rand between function solves some of this problem for us. Uh, it it converts the rand function basically it behind the scenes into integers. There's a preset formula you can use for this. And uh, it's programmed into the system so that it will automatically, if you specify the smallest value and the largest value, it will do that conversion for us. Now, uh, we have to work on the assumption that the coin, that the die we're rolling is in fact fair. Uh, if we wanted an unfair die, then we would actually have to go back to the rand function and do our own reconstructions. Uh, again, that's somewhat more complicated, and so we'll leave that for another time. But our rand between function, we're simply going to specify the smallest possible outcome inclusively that we want to be possible and the largest possible outcome that we want to be possible, again, inclusively. And so if we're doing a standard die, we would simply specify one and six. One is the smallest outcome on a standard die. Six is the largest integer outcome on a standard die. And so we will get outcomes that are one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, if we wanted to do a gaming die to make this a little bit more comp, a little bit more interesting, um, we could, if we had a four-sided die, we would just put in one and four. If we wanted to do a 20-sided die, we would simply put in one and 20. Um, so we can use this function uh, for all all different sizes of die if we want to make it a little bit more interesting. Now, we're not going to need to use an if function to do the outcome here because the, that's already built into the ran between function. And then what we're going to do, we're going to do 200 die rolls. Since we have more than um, one, than two different outcomes, I thought it would be useful to do more than 25 tosses. All right, so this is one possible way that we can generate our outcomes. And you can see if you go down the list, um, we have outcomes that range between one and six. We have every possible outcome, but not in any particular order. Sometimes we get strings of the same value. Sometimes we get strings of values that have no overlaps. about like you'd expect from a typical coin toss. Now, one way of summarizing the outcome counts is to use a pivot table. I'm gonna highlight my column that I want to count. And then I'm going to put this into the existing worksheet. I'm gonna put it right there. And we're going to count the rows. Now, because these are numerical outcomes, uh, when you go to count the values, it's actually the default is not going to count them. It is going to sum them. We had uh, 200 tosses, not 678 tosses. So you need to change that setting if you're going to use the pivot table from sum to count. And now we have a count, 200 tosses. I'm gonna remove the blank. And we can see how many of each outcome we had. Now, one that's one way we can do it. Another way that we can do it is to use the count if function. So I've set up a table here with our six outcomes. And in order to do the counts, we're going to use the count if function the range that we're counting is in the outcome column. And then the criteria is that we want it to be equal to one. And so this is telling me that I have, to, again, every time I hit enter, these formulas are going to recount. So this one is not gonna recount. 
So this one says there's only 21 ones in that cell. If I drag this over the entire range of values, um, it's going to get messed up because I didn't put in the dollar signs that I should have. So let's try again, count if. my column range, I need to put in my dollar signs so that when I copy the column doesn't update. Now I have 35 of them. And again, every time I hit enter, it recalculates. That's why these numbers don't agree. The uh, pivot table be fixes the values that it had when it was created. Okay, so again, I put the dollar signs here so that when I copied the columns, um, the the column it was counting, the point that it was pointing at did not update. But the reference to the number that it was looking for uh, did update as I copied down the row. And so now we can calculate our probabilities as being these numbers divided by the total count Now, one thing to kind of keep in mind here is that the probability of each of these outcomes is basically, again, this should be uniform, about one out of six, but it's random. And so you can see that these values are going to be sort of hovering around 1.67, one sixth. Um, but again, there's going to be some variability. And so they will not be exactly one sixth. And again, we can go to our formulas menu and we can run the calculate now option. And we can see that with each time we calculate, the numbers change a little bit, but they still stay kind of in that ballpark, sometimes a little lower, sometimes a little higher, but nonetheless in that 1.67 or so ballpark. Again, sometimes a little lower, sometimes a little higher. And the other thing that we can do, of course, that we have these outcomes is that we can make a graph. So I'm gonna graph the probabilities rather than the counts. And again, the nice thing about the random number generator that can be both annoying and useful is that uh, something did not work. It's, I moved something. There we go. Uh, again, one thing that can be really nice is that every time I hit enter, these probabilities are going to update. And I am going to make my graph nice. These are outcomes from the coin toss. This is portion. of outcomes. I'm a fair duck. And we can recalculate. And so again, uh, one advantage here is that you know that these outcomes are supposed to be uniform and they're all supposed to be equally likely. But again, random noise being what it is, you can see how the, the numbers again change somewhat. But when you're looking at sort of real world data, uh, a uniform distribution is never, when you're looking at actual numbers, going to 
ever come out to be perfectly even across the board. Um, but there's no there's no shape to this distribution. It's not bell curve shaped. It's not lower on one end or the other. It's clearly not skewed. All the bars are approximately similar heights, not exactly the same. So when we're assessing distribution shapes, we have to sort of take that into account as well, that there's noisiness in the data. And again, we could, if we extended this to more and more coin tosses, then we would expect that the proportions would be more and more similar, and they would stay closer and closer to that one six, that one uh, sixteen point seven percent, roughly, that we would expect from a perfectly fair coin. As again, from as according to the law of large numbers, you'll get closer to the true value the more tosses that you do. Okay. 